Puerto Rico, you mm -hmm. just returned. You've just returned from there. When you came back, you tweeted this. Was in Puerto Rico Saturday. Only 15% have power after two weeks. Hope to hit 25% by next month. 25%. Where else in the yeah. U.S. would this be acceptable? Is the federal government not doing enough? Um, certainly on the power grid, I, we're, we're not doing enough, and we have to do more. Um, I went down with a bipartisan delegation, 10 of us, House and Senate, Democratic and Republican, and I would say, Allison, that was the thing that struck me the most. I've been a governor, and I've done emergency response, but when you do hurricane relief in Virginia, part of the state's hit badly, but other parts not so badly, so people can go to other places. 78 localities in Puerto Rico, you guys have done a great job of covering this. Every one has been hit so that people, many are without housing, food, pure water, uh, electricity, telecommunication, transportation access, access to health care. And the notion that, well, within a month, 25% of the power will be back, where would we accept this in the United States? So, so why isn't the federal more. government doing more? Well, it's, it's the federal government, it's others too. Here's something that that I noticed when I was there. Um, when there's a hurricane in Virginia and I go out to like thank the work crews, a lot of the work crews are utility linemen from West Virginia or Indiana who come in and help out just like our crews go to other states. There weren't other crews there when I was there. The, so I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why uh, Puerto Rico has signed these mutual aid agreements with other utilities, yeah. but there weren't other people there helping I mean, them get what are their you, grid Who back are you up. calling on to do more today? Well, Congress has got to do more. So the president put in a request last week for $29 billion. It was $29 billion, but $16 billion was to fix the federal flood insurance program, and half a billion was for wildfires. So it's about $12 billion for Puerto Rico. Hurricane Sandy was 50 to 80. Katrina was $100 billion. So this is just a tiny, tiny little, hopefully, down payment. I challenged the administration. This is too small. And they said, this is to get us through a year, and we have to do more. But we've got to get to the bottom of this electricity grid situation. Because as you know, you can't run an economy manufacturing without a power system. Oh, they're in dire so, straits. I yeah. mean, everyone there is in dire straits. I don't know Short how they're going to get back to work. I don't know how they're going to rebuild. But you're saying that if the president asked for more billions, the Congress we're, would we're, authorize that? We're going to have to. I think we should immediately act on the first request to get us through year end. There still is assessment that has to be done. But the second thing is we've got to build a resilient power grid in Puerto Rico, help them do that, um, and so that they can get their economy back up and running. You see a mass exodus of people leaving Puerto Rico, you know, moving to other places. They'd rather live at home. We ought to help them get that power grid back up and running. President Trump says that you're not giving him enough credit. He tweeted this. Um, Nobody could have done what I've done for Puerto Rico with so little appreciation, so much work. What's your response? I just, I don't see it. I didn't see the sense of urgency. You know, I'll give you an example. So we did an aid package uh, for um, after, after the hurricane in Texas and Florida that included not just emergency money, but also CDBG funds for economic development. That wasn't in the package that the president sent us last week for Puerto Rico. Um, why aren't utility crews there? You know, it, the, the response was slow. Um, and admittedly, it's an island. You can't just drive next door to the next state with a utility truck and get there. That poses some challenges. But then the initial presidential visit, this watching him throw the paper towels into the crowd, it looked like he was, you know, it was kind of joking around or kind of a game rather than a seriousness that you would expect. Um, that Puerto Rico would be the 29th lar or 30th largest state if it was a state. I mean, this is a lot of people who are suffering. And I don't think the responses had the sense of urgency or the sufficiency of resources that we should see. Well, the San Juan mayor obviously agrees with you. Uh, Carmen Julian Cruz has been, as you know, quite outspoken. Yep. And she's gotten a bit of a smackdown from FEMA. I mean, who have said, we filter that out. That's noise, what she's saying. But she's the person making the really emotional entreaty yeah. for more help. So why do you think that FEMA is kind of trying to Well, look, they're, they're, her they're, bit? Sen they're sensitive about the politics, but they ought to just they ought to just do the work and the politics will be fine. Um, and it's not just the mayor. You know, we were with the governor on Saturday and he's been more measured in his words, but no less passionate in his belief that but he has said there. that he thinks that the president has been doing a great job I mean, he's not calling for he's not begging for more yeah but I can tell you I talked to a number of his folks who were working with him on Saturday I think he is worried that if he says anything wrong will the president take hold it against him I heard from his team a great deal of concern especially around this 
power grid issue. You cannot run an economy. I mean, they don't even know when schools are going to reopen, right? Can you, you can't run a hospital on a generator forever. You can't run a nursing home on a generator forever. Manufacturing is the biggest sector of the economy. How do you manufacture without power? So this is, I, I've never seen an emergency response challenge as a governor and mayor who's done it. I've never seen one that is more significant and difficult than the one that Governor Rosselló is dealing with now. And, uh, and our response for these American citizens should match the gravity of what he's dealing with. Senator Tim Kaine, great to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks for being Allison. here in studio. Let's get over to Chris. All right.